Hello, Nerdians. My name is Josh Hager Player, and what is the best ability in Draft League format? What's the best ability in Pokemon in general? Let me know in the uh, in the comments below if you did not already answer the question. You can see on your screen right now. This is a weekly series I do where I post on Twitter a question mainly targeted towards Draft League about various subjects across the spectrum, and then I blindly go over the answers that people um, sent to me on Twitter for the video. So if you want to be a part of that, of course, go follow me on Twitter at UltraPlayer12, as you can see on your screen. It'll also be linked in the description. And while you're down there, like the video because it helps me out a lot. Let's talk about some abilities in Pokemon. So I asked this question to my followers, and I specifically said don't say Regenerator because, you know, I wanted more variety. I actually want to see what people say. And Regenerator is arguably the best ability in the game. So I didn't want to just like see a bunch of answers for that. So we're going to jump in. We're going to see what people have to say today. I did say I'm also a sucker for neutralizing gas as I was talking about this. I think it was in this video right here, actually, funny enough. Wait, can you see my mouse? You can't. There we go. In this video where I ranked RU, um, how I talked a lot about uh, glaring wheezing, and I love neutralizing gas. I think it's an amazing ability. So let's dive in. Let's see what we got here today. All right. Henry starts us off with a very, very easy one to just throw out there, Intimidate. Intimidate is an amazing ability. It is literally the best ability in um, VGC. It's the one you got to have on almost every single team. It's why Incineroar is like the best mon ever. It's why Landorus is always the best mon ever. It's an amazing, amazing ability. Of course, it would be up here on this list. Uh, I, I fully agree, right? There's so many good Intimidate mons, and every time you have an Intimidate mon, like people have to think about it and prep. It, um, creates a lot of issues with like uh, defiance and everything. So even if you're the one using it, you gotta think about it. But it's such an amazing ability, just being able to get, like he said, be able to get a free minus one attack and force a lot of things out. It makes it so much easier for pivoting. And there's some amazing Pokemon that just uh, are so good solely because of Intimidate, right? I, I fully agree. Love Intimidate. <laughs> Man really said the anti ability ability. You're damn right, I did. I'd probably go with Levitate or Clear Body, cause I'm a, but I'm a sucker for Adaptability too. Um, Levitate's amazing. I love having Levitate. Um, ground is so spammable, and there's so many good ground types in the format with Excadrill, both Landos. Um, everyone always has a ground type, stuff like Gliscor, Mammoth Swine. It's always great to have Levitate. Clear Body, I'm not huge on, but I know it's a good ability. I've seen, had a lot of use out of it, just being able to ignore Intimidate. Um, but adaptability. I'm glad someone said adaptability. I love adaptability. I think it's so fucking stupid strong. It's why I love Porygon Z so much. It's just so stupid just to click a tri attack and it just like clears everything out of the water. Frisk, Thick Fat, and Prankster, top three in my opinion. Identifying items is an underrated skill. Thick Fat makes more mons into hard walls, and Prankster is annoying with a purpose. Frisk is actually really, really cool, right? Uh, again, with that video that I pointed out, um, ranking RU, which you should go check out. Ranking RU. Um, ranking are you Pokemon, right? Uh, Frisk. I, I mentioned Noivern. Someone, uh, I know really loves Noivern and loves running Frisk plus Protect to scout Choice Scarves and then being able to see what they're going to lock into. Uh, Thick Fat is really, really cool. Prankster, also really good. I love you. There's some really nice things you can pull off with Prankster. Um, Thick Fat I love having because, like, I, I sometimes end up really ice weak. So I love grabbing Pile of Swine or, like, Snorlax as, like, my ice resist. Super good stuff. But I think Frisk is probably the standout one in this one. Really knowing what's going on is really, really crucial. I know I have, <laughs> I have on many uh, occasions been like, please don't frisk me, please don't frisk me, please don't frisk me, because my set relies on surprise items just coming out of nowhere. Good shit from Incog. It's a generator. I checked and none of the replies I've listed so far, so now you have variety. <laughs> I hate you, Vivid. <laughs> Vivid gets on my damn nerves. Uh, but for real, try it. It's a terrain abilities and maybe weathers. Okay. So, yeah, I, I really like that. So, I love um, little niche things like that. Uh, I've said it before numerous times. My favorite team in, that I've ever drafted is when um, UBL Season 5, I think it was. I drafted double terrain with Galarian Weezing and Rillaboom. I had Clawitzer. I had, like, mods I really loved. The Leftover Recovery from... Grassy terrain like Arcanine because it's running boots and Jirachi, so it doesn't always have to rely on weather. I had Halucha, I had Driftblim. It was a absolutely fantastic team, and I love still to this day. Uh, but thank you, Vivid. Uh, I'm glad no one said Regenerator. I'm glad you went ahead and checked the replies. No one said Regenerator. I would like to hope not, because otherwise they can't read. 
Um, but I also love the weather. I've actually been a, on a real sun kick recently. And I almost drafted it in a little cup <laughs> coming up. Uh, but I need to do that. I need to draft a little cup sun. Because I did it in Ubers with Groudon, Heatran, Dragapult, Venusaur, stuff like that. And I'm doing it right now in MLP. I actually have MLP pulled up. Uh, as you can see here, Zamazenta, Zapdos, uh, Glow King, all these Pokemon. And then like th this stuff. Torkoal plus Victory Bell. Um, Slow King, Zapdos, Samazenta all have moves they can boost by fire moves. I have Hurricane that I can hit. It's really, really fun. Absolutely love it. Serene Grace, you're Cancer, and I hate you. Pressure to stop stall teams. Terravolt, um, you know, Mulberger is actually really cool, right? Pressure, I very rarely pressure stall people, <laughs> but I did recently in MLP. Actually, I pressure stalled a Rotom Frost out of Blizzard with my Zapdos with Roost. But, um, yeah, breaking abilities. Just like Neutralizing Gas, Terrabolt, Turbo Blaze, Multibreaker, those are all really, really cool abilities that can come in really, really clutch sometimes. Intimidate, absolutely amazing, like I said. Probably one of the best abilities ever <laughs> to ever come out. Like, it, it's impossible to deny that. Um, really good stuff, but I love Multibreaker. I love being able to break through stuff like that. It breaks through unaware, breaks through thick fat, stuff like that. Unless I'm the one trying to run like thick fat and levitate, in which case, it sucks and I hate it, right? <laughs> Lux Sands, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Well, if I can't say regen, I'll say Magic Art or Unaware. Both of these could be obnox as obnoxious as regen if they were as rise bet as regen is. It's funny that you say those two abilities. It's why Clef is so good. Clefable, I promise you, if it did not have those two abilities, it would probably be one of the worst Pokemon in all of competitive history. <laughs> it would be absolute dog shit. I promise you it would be worth like three points. It'd be an okay fairy. But what makes it what makes it good is that you can't poison it, or you can, but you can't whittle it down with poison, or you can't set up in its face. Amazing, uh, amazing. I can't. It's just, it just goes to show how important abilities can be to make a Pokemon like Clefable literally on paper. Okay, move like actually good move pool, good stats ish in some regards. Average stats at best actually, <laughs> pretty pretty not good stats, um, and a good typing. But, like, it would not hold up. It would just sink so far down. Those two abilities literally turn it from, a, like, a 2 out of 10 Pokemon to a 10 out of 10. Always an OU. Always a Pokemon you have to watch out for. Otherwise, it's going to set up in your face, and it's going to fuck you up. I mentioned Defiant earlier. Defiant and Competitive. Really, really good. Anti-Defog, Anti-Intimidate. Stuff like that. If we ever get a special Intimidate, I think those are going to become way, way more popular. Just because you have even more times when you... Woo! Where you can use stuff in, like Defiant and Competitive. Really, really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. I love using Defiant as like a really good surprise tool too. And be like, oh yeah, you can go ahead and defog these hazards. I actually wasn't even planning on keeping them. I wanted you to defog them. Go into Defiant or Competitive Mon. Um, I ran Scarf Milotic a while back with Competitive. It would be Mac Normal Speed with the Scarf and Sticky Web counteracting each other. But if I came on on Sticky Web, I would have plus two attack. Or plus two special attack. It was really, really fun. Rail answer. <laughs> Smeemy answer. Sturdy or overcoat? Hmm. <laughs> Rail answer. I like Drudge's abilities on other mons. So that's Rough Skin, Mold Breaker, and Sheer Force. Rough Skin is actually really, really interesting. Endure plus Rough Skin is super annoying, especially when you pair it with um, Endure or Rocky Helmet. Um, or Iron Barbs, I guess, works. So lots of chip on physical mons immediately. If you can survive one hit, You'll endure and survive the second one. Then you know they'll have to hit you three times. That is 16.67 plus 12.5, which is 29.17 times three is 80. It's 88% off. If you got rocks up, three hits of those combined is a knockout. Absolutely great. Really, really good stuff. Um, sheer Force, incredibly strong. Any mom with Sheer Force, you have to watch out for. I think, like, the only one, really, that you wouldn't have to watch out for is actually right above, has the ability right above it in Defiant, which is Braviary. Um, but anything with Sheer Force, you gotta be careful. Need a King, Need a Queen, Darmanitan, stuff like that. It, it hits hard, it hits fast, and you gotta be careful of it. And then, lastly, we mentioned Mole Breaker earlier. Really, really good stuff to break through. But Drudd has the um, unique ability, I guess, of being able to glare and Stealth Rock in the face of stuff like Mega Sableye and Zatu because of Mole Breaker. Real cool. Really cool stuff. Uh, so we have immunity abilities, which is really cool. 
and can really turn the tide on a lot of Pokemon. The only reason why Dracovish isn't like the most broken Pokemon ever is because there's Water Absorb Mons out there. <laughs> in Galar decks, if there wasn't Water Absorb Mons, it literally would never be allowed because it would just steamroll through everything. And when I say that, I mean like original Galar decks. I really like having immunity abilities. You never know when they're going to pop up. You never know how much of an annoyance they are until you're facing them. Um, I think it has to be Intimidate. It dominates v VGC and it's Lando I. Jorge, the nerve of you. Imagine getting it wrong. It's okay. I forgive Jorge because the only Pokemon he knows anything about is a Lone Executor. It's so busted that you don't have a special version yet. It allows you to equip the opponent just by switching it. It's true. It's so good. It's it's really, really just like immensely amazing. And I love how like widespread it is. If it was only on like one or two Pokemon, it'd be different. But it, it is so widespread. Like off the top of my head, uh, Crocodile, Landorus, Incineroar, Scrafty. Uh, there's a like a weird bird that has it. Staraptor. Like they're, they're all, it's just like it's widespread. So you always can see it pop up. So bad, so hard to deal with. Pressure. Y'all are mean. <laughs> Y'all are some mean sons of bitches. I know what you're doing. Subtoxic, Suicune, Raikou, Pressure, Stall. Y'all some mean sons of bitches. You know that? Y'all are so evil. Good lord. Okay. Pressure. <laughs> It's really really good. So obviously pressure doubles the usage stat the usage of PP um, moves against you and Can be really good for stalling out some things. It's why subtoxic protect coon was really really popular otherwise known as Vin coon or When Riker runs it or really anything runs it with pressure it becomes really really annoying and that move that could probably break through that Pokemon only has so much PP and now it has half and now it's slowly just whittling down. Even when they protect, that still costs you two PP. So it's just whittled and whittled and whittled and whittled and whittled until it's gone. And when that move is gone, you no longer beat the Pokemon. It's such a dirty, dirty tactic. It's such a dirty ability. Everyone who says this is going to hell. <laughs> y'all so y'all so mean. Who else said this? Who else had the nerve? Brian, how dare you? Okay, I like Brian. He can stay. He can stay. I, I like Brian, but Chris, you're going to jail. Omar, curse body. Another, okay, so I'm starting to see that theme, right? I feel like Mia's going to say pressure because <laughs> it's Latios' or Levitate because it's Latios' ability. Um, curse body. And uh, so we see it popping up again, right? So, like, it keeps popping up. Cursed Body, no. Cursed Body's actually the other one. I was thinking about money. Woo! Cursed Body. Cursed Body's dirty. <laughs> Cursed Body's annoying as hell. Because it always triggers when you don't need it to. <laughs> if you fire off a coverage move, right, on this Gengar, and it's the only mon you need this coverage for, it'll never trigger. Never. No, but when you're choice locked, you're going for game with your choice locked, Darmanitan clicking Flare Blitz is going to disable the Flare Blitz. You're done. And now what are you going to do? Struggle to death? <laughs> Absolutely insane. I hate it. <laughs> Mia. What did Mia say? Levitate. Ah. <laughs> uh, what did I say? Mia loves Latios. Latios. Good one. For real, probably Intimidate, although not being as effective versus Mega Glade. It makes it worse, and there's also an argument for Oblivious Aromaville ended up with, um, um, okay, so we have pressure again, um, Liv commenting on that, the, the thing about Intimidate, and the reason why it's so easy to say it's the best move, is because they had to nerf it in this last generation, they made, what was it, Inner Focus, own tempo and something else immune to intimidate that's giving a lot of mods like mega glade that huge advantage it's why mega glade is so good now is because you can't intimidate it um let's see here i'm pretty sure there's another ability okay so here we are uh, oblivious and scrappy. So good stuff. 
So that's also why Megalopony is also really good now, because it's also immune. <laughs> and it's just like it was already rocking out with Scrappy, Scrappy anyway. So really good stuff there on Intimidate. Helping out a whole lot on some of these mons. Um, but it, it got nerfed recently, which is really sad. But it's still, like, really, really good. Oblivious and Aroma Rail, also really good. Like, <laughs> my good pal OG Albina, I hope you're down there saying Oblivious too. But there's a reason why Licky Licky is actually, like, a really good mon. It's a very decent mon that can't be toxic or on or taunted or encored, which makes it a really solid wish passer. Not being able to be taunted is really, really good for bulkier teams, which is generally what I always run is like somewhat closer to balance or like bulky offense, I guess. But really, really good stuff. I love, I love Oblivious um, Pressure. Again, we see it again. You're dirty. Live. I expected you of all people to say it. You're dirty. You're bad. Bok toxic. How dare you pressure stall in Wi-Fi format? I see it. This isn't necessarily like specific towards Wi-Fi format, but like Liz knows what I mean. Magic Guard. Being able to stop passive damage is huge when Drown relies on status and hazard damage. That's also why Regen is so good. Healing off the passive damage is everywhere in this format. Yeah, so we see Magic Guard again. It's really good for a reason. Obviously, you can't take any uh, damage other than direct. No hazards, no toxic, no... Um, I can't remember. I thought there was a third thing to protect against. Hazards. Oh, um, Weather Chip. So, Hail and Sandstorm. It's really, really good. And the thing is, it also isn't mold break it, bro mold bro broken when you toxic a Magic Guard Pokemon. So, if you toxic something with Magic Guard with, like, Excadrill, and you're sitting there in front of it, it's still not going to take damage. It doesn't work like that. You need something like Neutralizing Gas or um, it to hit you with Mummy and to take its ability that way. Really good stuff. I think Frisk, honestly, yeah. So we see, we see Frisk, honestly. Usually, when something has it, that is the go-to ability. Being able to establish a choice user is particularly and super important. And a random stats Pokemon can be noted advanced instead of getting countered and mirror coded. So there's so much, like, like I said, there's so much you can do with Frisk, right? It's such a good ability to have ready and identify your opponent's items. You never know when your opponent is so heavily relate, relied on that item they're holding. You never know when that resist barrier is going to come in. A sash can be really, really important to identify immediately. I have run random sash liege just for the hell of it all the time. It's so important to know what items are going around. That's why knockoff is such a great move. It's why trick is so brutal sometimes because some Pokemon really need that item. It's really, really good stuff. You never know when it's going to save your ass. Run Frisk. I promise you'll thank me later. Prankster. <sighs> we get it, Dan. Dan. Fuck. Matt. I don't know why I said Dan. I saw the D in Dr. Slacking. We get it, Matt. <laughs> you like Whimsicott. But you know what? Whimsicott has other abilities, like sun, like a sun boosting ability with chlorophyll or infiltrator which is really really cool against the Roraville teams there's other abilities but i love prankster i love prankster on whimsicott especially and the reason why i think it's so good on whimsicott is because with the nerf to it in gen 7 where it does not affect dark types you gotta be really careful switching in thinking you're gonna block a uh, prankster move because you might get specs moon blasted and you might just drop Really, really unfortunate. It's one thing when you're going against like Sableye or Tornay or Tor yeah, Torneye or Thundee Eye, but when you're doing it against a freaking Whimsicott, you gotta be careful and you gotta be ready in case your Pokemon just goes down. So I'll give Matt credit on this one, although he is very stinky. Magic Guard. We see it time and time again. There's a reason. Intimidate. There's a reason. These are so fucking good. I remember I ran Intimidate Spam one time, and it was so... Like, the, the team was not actually that good. It's one of my older teams. But it actually held up really well, because so many physical breakers couldn't do shit against Triple Intimidate. It was like Arcanine, Tauros... There's two more Intimidators I didn't mention earlier, and I think Lando. Um, really good. Just spamming Intimidate and just dropping attacks all over the place. When they come out with a special one, it's going to be rough. And Magic Guard, I mean, what else do you need? It also blocks Life Orb, which is actually really, really cool. Having Magic Guard Life Orb is so great. 
Can we get a Life Orb Clefable 6 in chat? In the comments, can we? Also an avid void of neutralizing gas. Let's get it. Ah, I knew I could rely on Ellie. Someone replied. Um, <laughs> there we go. I knew I could rely on Ellie of all people. Look at her with some good ass taste. Neutralizing gas. I love this ability. It's so good. The biggest thing that I love about it is running Scarf Weezing and neutralizing some Weather Sweeper trying to be plus two in their weather. And then just cooking them. Because their Sun Sweepers aren't going to like, um, they're not going to like Fire Blast. They're usually Grass types. Neither is Excadrill. Your Rain Sweepers, guess what? Galarian Weezing gets access to Thunder. And it, neutralizing Gas doesn't make the rain go away. It just makes you not as fast. So now I'm faster. I have this thunder to give you and kill you. Or if it's like Kingdra, I can strange steam you. Whatever. What are you going to do? Nothing. You're going to die. I love neutralizing gas. There's so many times you never know when it's going to come in handy. Toxicing something. And uh, like, like Clef. And now, guess what? That toxic racks up whenever you're in. So now they have to leave. Neutralizing gas is just so, so good. And what I really like about it is how it triggers with switch outs. So if you're in and they switch in their Arcanine, they don't trigger Intimidate because neutralizing gas gets rid of it. But when you switch out, the second you start to switch out, the ability goes away and all the abilities come back. Intimidate intimidates you right before you switch out. So whatever you switch in doesn't have to take that, doesn't have to take that minus one. Really, really good stuff. I love this ability. It's so good. Someone finally mentions Beast Boost 2. You, it's so dumb. I have literally gone on rampages with Nihilego just because I ran Beast Boost. It's such a good ability. Used so very well, I've seen across the board. You have to be careful. You've got to be careful. It's why Cell Steel is one of the best mons. Other than, you know, Steel Flying being one of the best defensive typing ever. But it, it's offensive prowess is really good. It's why not going to delegates banned. Stuff like that. Really, really good stuff. Special mention to immunities, but water absorb is the biggest one. Stops Vish and Rain, which are both monsters in draft. 100% agree. I've mentioned before, Vish would be insane without water absorb all over the place. Even on, like, shitty mons, right? You got to be, like, respectful of water absorb when you're using fish even like something like lapras which is such a low tier bond i had to respect it when i was facing it and i had to run like sub low kick or something or like expert bell with stone edge stuff like that you got to be careful you got to respect the uh, immunities always desolate land and intrepid sword i hate jesse final four <laughs> i hate jesse so much yes th these are amazing abilities but unfortunately Anyone who unbans the Pokemon who have these abilities in Draft League should not be allowed to run a Draft League. I hate Jesse 504. I mean, objectively, it's huge power if we're judging these in a vacuum, but in terms of what abilities give me the most trouble, it'd be Regen, Intimidate, and the Body abilities. Okay. So, huge power. I mean, that's pretty fair. <laughs> in a vacuum, huge power is probably one of the best abilities in the game. Double user attack. Mega Manicham becomes... An insanely difficult to deal with and Mawile is almost impossible to switch into. Good stuff. But, regen. You're not allowed to say that. Nye, 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 nye. Intimidate, greatest ability in the game. And then the body abilities. Yo, you know what? Special mention to the, like, the static and flame body. You never know when that shit's gonna pop up and mess you up. <laughs> Curse body, static, flame body. Zapdos is so, so scary when you're like, oh god, it doesn't have pressure as static. Because <laughs> you know what's going to happen, right? You know. Even when you don't want to think about it, you just know in the back of your head, I oh, U-turn here, he's going to go Zapdos. Even if, when it's a Pokemon that shouldn't switch in to Zapdos, right? Or switch, so Zapdos shouldn't switch in to. Like, let's say Lycanroc, right? Got access to U-turn. I'd bring in Lycanroc on a Pokemon, and I'd be like, what if he goes, what if he goes Zapdos and gets a static on me? Then what do I do? I'm fucked. Just like, Zapdos is not switching in. <laughs> Zapdos is not switching in to it. But it's in the back of my mind. Trace. Yes. Yes. Honest to God, when I talked about Trace in the last video, I specifically thought of this question because of Trace. 
abilities are really good. They make or break Pokemon. What if I could just send in a Pokemon and steal your ability? Trace comes in so handy. I mentioned I think it was on Gardevoir. You never know when you're just going to get the best ability ever. What if you come in and Nihilego is like like a stealth rock variant, right? And you come in and you're, you're, you're Scarf and you trace Beast Boost. Click Psy Shock. Well, guess what? Now you're plus one and you have a Scarf. What if your Pokemon doesn't have great Psychic Resist left? Guess what? They're not in a good spot. What if their plan was, I can beat it if it's Scarf and I can beat it if it's Specs? Well, now technically it's both. <laughs> what if you trace Sheer Force and click Trick Room? What if you click, what if you come in on like, uh, um, something with Water Absorb, freaking Scald, like Gas Drop? Guess what? There's so many examples of it. There's so many different ways trace can come in just the greatest fucking time coming in and tracing intimidate and bouncing it back to your opponent guess what most intimidators are physical tauros is physical arcanine is physical crook star after lando these pokemon are physical attackers what happens when you trace their intimidate and send it back they're crippled and they gotta switch out amazing Frisk, said it before, amazing ability. Prankster, Intimidate, Boost Boost, and Magic Art. All talked about, all really, really good abilities. I stand by them. Prankster is like my like least one. I know there's great examples of it, but honestly, I'm just like a blanket. I really think the other ones are just so much better. Beast Boost! All right, Nacho, I get you. Good old Beast Boost. Yes, 100%. Like I said, it's why ne I went on Rampage with Nihiligo. It's why Pheromosa can get scary. All these Pokemon can get really scary. Because they just start snowballing out of control. Also, if we're talking about Beast Boost, we got to give special attention to Magirna and Soul Heart, um, which is fairly enough similar to um, Beast Boost. Really, really great. Snowball effects are crazy. There's a reason why they're called snowball effects. You start it, it's hard to stop once it gets going. Thoughts on Moxie in the right situation? Yes, just just like Beast Boost and just like Soul Heart. I can't believe I forgot about it. Once an opponent gets those boosts, it's really, really hard. Once you get going, it's so hard to stop. I think we need more Moxie Sweepers, honestly, in the game. We gotta get, like, I don't see Moxie Sweep as much as I used to. Really, really needs some love to shine, but it's on, like, so few Pokemon. What is it even on? Can I click this? I hope so. So we got Pinsir. Which, I mean, I see a lot of Hypercutter and Mold Breaker, honestly. Um, Gyarados, you see a lot of Intimidate. Uh, Heracross, you see Guts. Salamence, Fair, and then, like, the Crocodile and the Scrappy Lion. These are some, like, good examples. Mo uh, Mighty Anna, Onchro, Litlier, Pyro. We, like, we need some really good Moxie Sweepers, right? The problem, I think, with all these Moxie Mons is that there's always, always, like, a really good second ability to run, Right? There's always just like a second super good ability that you can just like come in really handy. Mold Breaker Stealth Rocks and Intimidate to help set up and Intimidate to help set up. Like Intimidate is really common. Good lord. Good stuff. Probably huge power or Intimidate. Who ta- Susan has to say, Frisk, you don't have to answer Leo. <laughs> Again, it, like they're all good abilities. Huge power is just in insane insane you don't think that plus two is like like you obviously know that plus two is obviously like really really good but man you don't really think about it too much until you're just like in the face because like something like sword stand you're like oh i have a way to stop this right like think about a pokemon that you face and you're like oh this sword stands, i can stop this yeah what if it just naturally has that <laughs> scary stuff i'm gonna say every immunity ability that doesn't have a type immune to it such as flash fire water absorb and sap Shipper. they provide great utility and make help partners such as mega scissor plus liking the fire plus scald immunity really good stuff yeah um i'm glad someone gave a real life example of it like mega scissor plus heatran it's a really good double steel core for a reason it's because they check each other because they help check it, um, each other's weaknesses so well really good stuff i'm glad that like these immunity i was not immediately thinking about the immunities but, like, I'm really glad that this is getting brought up a lot. Versus me, like, he's been static. Yo, I told you. I told you. There's no reason for me to fear static sometimes. There's no reason why I should ever even consider that it's going to be a threat. But then, like, suddenly... Oof. <laughs> Good stuff. Four Aquarius. 
Psychic Surge. Yeah, we've talked about the Surges and Weathers before. I don't really think i talked too much about the Surges, but the Surges are really cool because, you know, they're also boosting your power. But there's always those, like, second, like, little abilities. I know I just ran Misty Surge as a move recently, or Misty Terrain as a move. Helped me out a lot. Those second abilities come in super, super handy sometimes and can be really detrimental. I faced Tapu Fini and Tapu Koko um, week one and two with this team, and I couldn't rest with Zamazenta, so I, like, was in a real bad spot with it, so, <laughs> those terrains come in super handy, and they can pop their seeds and get a lot of work, Flame Body, aww, I feel bad for anyone saying this, because, like, they've been scarred, they, they, they've had things happen to them, they, they are, they're not feeling too good, and it looks like our last one is, in fact, Intimidate or Mold Breaker from my personal experience. Our most abilities are good if you know how to use them. I'm really glad. Sean, I'm so glad that that's the last response on this because that is so true. And that's what I love about Draft League. Most abilities, moves, items, Pokemon, stats are good if you know how to use them. It's why people will be like, this Pokemon's so broken. And it'll be like a 5 point one, And everyone will be like, ha ha. You're bad. That's a dumb Pokemon, but that person might know how to use it. I've taken 10 point or less mods, and I've taken them to MVP and Ubers leagues. Amazing comment. 100%. Love this comment to death. Absolute amazing. Love it, love it, love it. This is why I play Draft League. It's for this sentence right there. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for sticking around for the end of the video. If you liked it, please leave a like in the comment or leave, leave a like and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked or what your favorite ability was. Maybe there's an ability that you really liked that was not mentioned here. Tell me what it is. I'd love to hear it and I'd love to talk about it. If you have any suggestions for any future comp for future questions, feel free to tell me. Sometimes I do have to think really hard about what I should be asking because eventually I'm going to run out of things to say. And lastly, make sure you're subbed. Only 57% of the people who watch my videos are subbed. It would be really, really mean a lot if people were subbing to me so I can get to 500 subs and put out my really important video that I've been wanting to put out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Really, really good video today. Really, really good abilities. Really, really good talk. Loved it. Thank you all. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.